This story that y'all about to hear from me is going to be one of those stories where you say, wow, I can't believe what it is that I'm actually hearing. I couldn't believe what I was actually seeing when it came across my YouTube page. So I was just looking at YouTube and this story kind of popped up and I said, let me go ahead and click on this because the title kind of, you know, caught me off guard because I saw a year and it said 1994 and I'm thinking that this guy got caught in a car that came out in 1994. It's amazing that a car will hold up that long, but you never know. But it wasn't talking about him being caught in a car that came out in 1994. This guy who you see on your screen, who's a name, whose name is Muhammad Bilal El Amin, was captured after he has literally been wanted for 28 years. What did he be wanted to be wanted for? For murder. This guy back in 1994 killed an 18 year old man by shooting him. Based, well, from what I heard or what I read is he shot this guy in the face. So this was an instant kill. And 28 years later and after he has been on a wanted list since the early 2000s, he was captured during a routine traffic stop. Basically, what happened was, of course, you know, when it comes to something like this, they ran his prints, you know, and then it, something came up in the system and said, hold up. We've been looking for this guy for like oh, for years for him being wanted for a murder. And the DNA or the fingerprints, I should say, came back as a match with him. And that's how they captured him. A routine traffic stop is what got this man who's been on the run for almost 30 years caught finally. But I'm going to go ahead and read the article and see what else they're saying. It was posted on 11 Alive on August 19, 2022. A man who had been wanted in Atlanta for murder for nearly 28 years was finally caught this week during a routine traffic stop, according to the FBI. The agency said in a release that Muhammad Bilal El Amin was captured by the Oconee County Sheriff's Office near Athens in the course of the traffic stop. It was not clear how deputies tied El Amin to the 1994 crime during the traffic stop. He had been, I'm sorry, he had a FBI reward out for his arrest since the early 2000s. After allegedly shooting a man in the face with a handgun in the Oakland City Martyr Station in Atlanta in November 1994. After evading capture for tw for several years, a federal arrest warrant charging him with flight to avoid prosecution was issued in May 2001. 11 Alive reporting at the time of the murder named 18 year old Jafford Tucker of Hapville or Hapeville as the victim. Police had said the suspect El Amin was seen walking with Tucker before the shooting when El Amin suddenly pulled out a gun and shot the 18 year old. Tucker died at the scene. 11 Alive reported at the time. And that's pretty much the whole article now there is a video of his arrest as you can see right here this is actually a screenshot from the arrest itself that was posted on the 11 alive uh youtube channel and the whole thing is about 11 minutes long now they pretty much they they pretty much handled him in a professional way they didn't like rough him up or anything like that because he wasn't resisting or anything like that he was just acting pretty normal but look if you look at the video and what i'll probably do is i'll probably post the link that you can watch it you can tell his body language was like, oh, fuck, they probably on to me. You got to think this guy was on the run for 28 years, which means he had to be on his best behavior in order to not be captured or pulled over or anything. He can even have a minor infringement. And the day he gets pulled over, he was probably like, it's, that's it. Because they're going to run the prints and they're going to find out that I'm this, that and the third. And he even tried to say some things in hopes that he would be able to be let go. But see, the thing is, once they had already ran them prints, they was like, now nah, we you definitely ain't being let go now. My thing is this. This guy was pretty bold and very risky to stay in the same city. All these years in the same exact city in which he committed this murder. And it's like it also makes you question, what was the police department doing all this time? He was literally right underneath their nose. It's not like they didn't know who he was. For him to be on the run for 20, well, not even on the run because he didn't run nowhere. He didn't leave the state. He didn't leave the county. He didn't leave the city. He stayed in the same spot 
for almost 30 years. And they just now caught him because of a routine traffic stop. If they didn't, if it wasn't for the traffic stop, he would still be out there. Now, get this. Had he actually left the state, they probably would have never caught him. But then again, even if he was to get pulled over in another state and they ran his prints there, it would have still ran a match because he was wanted by the FBI. It's not like he was wanted on a local level. He was on an basically on the FBI watch list. So that's federal. That's any state, any county, any city. But the crazy part about this story is stories like these are not unique. Do you know how many criminals there are out there that have committed these type of crimes and it takes them forever to apprehend them? And sometimes when they do catch them, it's in situations like this that you would least expect. I bet when he woke up that morning, he was not expecting to get pulled over, have his prints ran and them finding out. Well, yeah, basically them finding a, a whole criminal like they literally had a gold mine with this one. <laughs> he thought, oh, I'm just going to probably get a, a ticket. I have to pay it and, and, and go on about my day. But as you can see. The only place he's going to is the same place he should have went 28 years ago, and that's the prison. But I'm sure this is going to be some closure for the family members of the deceased. Imagine they went all this time trying to find justice for their their loved one, and the person that did it was living right under their nose the entire time. And they didn't even know it. I'm just it just blows my mind how he was able to thrive in the same exact city. Like he never left. He stayed there the entire time. He never left. He did not once go to another state to, to move or anything like that. And it kind of caught me off guard. Cause I'm gonna be honest. This guy looks really young for him to have done something back in 1994. Now they said that the guy that he murdered, was 18. I wonder if they were around the same age. Because I'm going to be honest. This guy looks like. If this is how he looks in 2022. I'm curious to see what he looked like in 94. Because he didn't age. I know they say you know black don't crack. But when I saw this. And they said 28 years ago. I'm looking at him. Are you sure? This looked like. Because this guy looked like he could have committed the crime. Probably five years ago. If that. Just looking at how he looks now. But that's the only thing I can really, you know, give him because I'm sure some of y'all are probably thinking the same exact thing. So, like I said, this guy could probably very well be in his 40s. Most likely he is, but he doesn't look it at all. That's why when I saw the video and I was like. My first instinct was, did they get the right guy <laughs> or did, was this like a, his doppelganger? But this is the guy. This is him. But I'm going to go ahead now and conclude the video. Y'all let me know what you think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Make sure to click that bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video or go live. All the links will be down in the description. And I will talk to you in the next one.